Let's talk about my confidence level after I watch the scrimmage. We'll discuss that more today here on Locked On Jaguars. You are Locked On Jags, your daily Jacksonville Jaguars podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Locked On Jaguars. I am your host, Tony Wiggins, here on the Locked On Jaguars podcast, your daily podcast about your Jacksonville Jaguars, and it's your team every day. And we thank you for making us your first listen here on Locked On Jaguars. I'm going to get right into it, man. Heavy scrimmage last night. Heavy scrimmage, hard-hitting scrimmage, probably the last one that we'll observe as members of the media. It was held in the stadium. And it was some popping and locking and jaw dropping going on. And I'll give you the assessment of that practice here in the first segment, as well as in the the second two segments. I'm going to discuss my confidence level with each individual unit and finish that off with the confidence level of the entire team as we move forward here as preseason gets ready to start coming to an end. Now we're, we're on the backstretch of preseason and we're getting closer and closer to the opener in Washington. First and foremost, things that I liked that I saw, especially since there was a limited number of spectators outside of media, uh, the team camaraderie night and day between what I've seen last year. And it's similar to what I saw in 2017, but even more so, it's probably a little bit better than that. And it's because there aren't as many guys on this team that you don't know how they're going to feel on a daily basis. Now that doesn't mean that the camaraderie is better. It just means that covering it, you're a little more comfortable. Of course, I'm always comfortable around people. I don't care about um, the attitudes and all that. Ain't nobody going to, somebody, somebody going to hit you. No, anybody going to do that. So the thing is, is, you just to give you guys a, a general feeling these guys genuinely feel like they like each other and that they play for each other uh there's a lot of player ownership i noticed uh between drills a lot of guys coaching guys that quite frankly they are trying to actually beat out for positions but it's a situation of iron sharpening iron they were so detailed in fact last night coaches and players were telling guys to back up back up they were pushing guys behind the the yellow and off of the white line, they had officials and they were simulating the serious game situation. And guys took every aspect of it seriously. They were backing up behind the line. They were making sure that in the games, that in practice, they were going they were going through the motions as if they were going through games. Now, the offense is on one side and the defense is on the other, and they were barking at each other. And uh, if you're not used to competitive sports, you would think that they didn't like each other, but that certainly isn't the case. Those guys were just in the middle of what I call the ultimate competition. And if I could show you my list here, there's three things that I wrote down. It was camaraderie, player ownership, and competition. It's because you saw a lot of that last night. And um, I know there might be somebody who's pessimistic that says that that's what you're supposed to see on an NFL team, uh, on an NFL practice field for an NFL team. And I would tell you, you're right but that's not what you've always seen here. And that's why I'm telling you that it's a lot different. Jacksonville has not always been a place that had stuff like that. Last year was a guy on the bullhorn. And I'm giving a blank stare. If you're not watching, I'm on YouTube giving a blank stare. There was a, I'm blinking uncontrollably. There was a bullhorn last year. Okay. Uh, With guys telling people, uh, go drink water, run to your next spot. I mean, I can't, I can't think about, <laughs> I keep, I keep trying to move forward, man. And I'm not letting it have a hang. I'm not letting it have that hangover. I always t- tell everyone about like, don't let, don't let the things from the past uh, keep you from thinking. I can't stop laughing about it. Keep you from accepting your blessings from the future. Right. So that's why I'm laughing because it doesn't mean that some of the stupid stuff we used to see isn't going to pop up in my head every now and then. And it just tickles the hell out of me that <laughs> those dudes actually went through that stuff 
and actually thought that that was going to help somebody win a game. Uh, you got a dude yelling at you with a bullhorn, man, telling you, make sure you get to your spot. Go, run now. I'm thinking like, <laughs> this is this might be considered bad radio or bad podcasting, but sometimes you got to laugh at your past, man. And, and these dudes actually thought that they were going to win football games or that was somehow helping people. Win or lose a day. <laughs> so it's just like, to me, it's just the I have to laugh at the stuff because the stuff was absolutely hilarious. And from covering this team officially for 13 years, but I actually used some I actually usually have used to have access to practice all the way back when they did two a days. And I just had never seen anything like that before, man. So hey Urban, how you doing? I hope all is well. Every time I look at Doug Peterson, by the way. Before we get to these, I'm gonna tell you where my comfort level is and my confidence level is in these next segments. Every time I I see Doug Peterson, I'm thinking like somewhere Urban Meyer has to be sitting there. I wish he could see this, and it's like this is how you do this. You, you don't have a dude with a bullhorn and you don't walk around with your coffee in your hand and just circle the field while people are doing stuff. It's like it was the Twilight Zone, bro, and and it's like. It's it's entirely different situation. So I'm gonna get into it. I'm gonna tell you guys, or we're gonna talk together. I'm not gonna speak at you. We're gonna talk about my confidence level as of this point. Does not mean it could change. So I'm gonna explain that before I start it. Before I start doing it, my confidence confidence level means is where I am now. It doesn't mean it can't go up or down. Injuries can change it. Uh, we don't like talking about those, but um, the other thing that can change it is improvement. Guys getting better. Just making one or two. Uh, little additions moving forward and folks getting better just based on familiarity and the staff growing older they're going to learn from some of the games that they play this year they're going to be able to apply some of those lessons and they're going to improve each and every week so that doesn't mean that this is my outlook for the team this is just where I personally feel right now about the team and I'll explain each and every one of those positions for you I'm going to do all of that for you guys here on Locked on Jaguars today. But first, I want to tell you about our friends over at Athletic Greens. Our next partner has a product I literally use every day. I started taking AG1 because, one, I wasn't getting the vitamins that I needed. Two, I didn't have the energy I needed. Three, I have shared with you guys in the past where I had some gut health and I needed better gut health. And I really hate taking all of those pills every single day because I take enough of them as it is. Now I've been on it for about seven or eight weeks now and i'm gonna tell you i love it it doesn't taste like it's super healthy it has a kind of mild tropical taste and i actually look forward to it each day why i i personally consume it for all of those reasons and i want you guys to know that it has helped me i have a lot more energy and i actually do feel like i'm doing the right thing it's lifestyle lifestyle friendly whether you eat keto paleo vegan dairy free gluten free or you're one of those people that keep eating free like whatever you want free you can still use these vitamins every single day right now it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition it's just one scoop and a cup of water every day that's it no need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health to make it easy athletic greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune supporting of vitamin d and five feet travel packs of your first purchase all you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash nfl network again that is athleticgreens.com slash nfl network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional help that you actually do need that's right your ultimate daily nutritional insurance is at athleticgreens.com slash nfl network we thank you for joining us here I'm going to give you a healthy dose of this Jaguar talk right now. Uh, after I got all that laughed out of my system, I apologize to you guys, but y'all know what it is. Man, y'all know how your boy rolls, so we're going to go ahead and move along. Confidence levels, I'm going to tell you how I'm going to do it. I'm going to either go high, I'm going to go low, or I'm going to go okay. And I'll explain to you what okay means and, and how that could flip-flop and change. This does not represent the way the Jaguars feel about themselves. This is me. In my personal assessment of what I've seen over the first two preseason games, as well as 
um, what I've just posed from practice and then just listening. I heard Doug yesterday. He talked interestingly about the offensive line, and I'll get to that when I start talking about him. But right now, how do I feel about quarterback? High. I feel very high about Trevor Lawrence and his uh, his outlook for the season, his development, the way he's grasping information, the way he's continuing to work, get better, the things the coaches are saying about him, and then the things that you're seeing on the field. And even talking, I heard Zay Jones last night. I was there when he was doing an interview with Demetrius of uh, Jacksonville.com. And he was just talking about the rapport and how it's important for guys to really know each other and their backgrounds and understand what, they, what, what they're made of, basically, uh, if, I'm, if I can paraphrase. So I really, really like Trevor Lawrence. I like him uh, physically, but I also like him as a leader. I like the way he's looked on the field and the way he's carried himself. And uh, he, he is what a face of the franchise is supposed to look like. He doesn't have to demand respect. He commands that from his teammates, and uh, it seems like it is really, really working. So what you guys are going to see on the field uh, is exactly what you want from a franchise quarterback. Let's move to the running back position. The outlook on the running back position is I'm okay with it right now. The reason why I'm okay is because coming into the season, you had two guys coming off of injuries and one had never played uh, in Travis Etienne as well as uh, James Robinson. James Robinson ran around a little bit in formation on seven on seven yesterday after an Achilles injury at the end of last year. Looks powerful, strong, looks like the same guy and really is going to provide a yin and a yang with Travis Etienne. When you're around them, you really see the difference in their body types. Etienne is a little taller and uh, Robinson is built like a tank and they'll provide two different skill sets. I think you'll get a little bit more speed and pop and explosiveness from Travis Etienne, but I think you're going to get a lot of steady Eddie, good body lean moving forward from James Robinson and Snoop Connor. Snoop Connor looks like uh, a combination of both of them mixed together a little bit, but he's also going to be the third back and provide. And uh, if if they keep, I don't know if they're going to keep four. I think they should. Rock Armstead has made a made a made a little bit of an impression with the way that he plays with that power. And he's yoked a little different, man. If you're ever around Rock, Ar- Rock Armstead, you, Rockwell Armstead, you'll see real quick that he's not really like everybody else, but he doesn't have to be uh, for him to be successful. Let's get to the offensive line. The offensive line is just okay for me. Um, this is the one that can actually go up and get better. Cohesion, continuity, chemistry, all of the C's that we always use. Uh, when they, they haven't gotten it yet. You know, we don't know who the right tackle is going to be. There's going to be Walker Little or um, uh, Walker Little or 75, Jawan Taylor. I do believe that Jawan Taylor probably has a leg up on him right now. The fact that they have two young, big 325 pound guys over there and a really good coach and Coach Rocher, I, I believe they're going to end up being okay. The center position, obviously, with Luke Fortner at center, he is going to be your starting center because. Tyler Shatley is in a battle of his life right now with left guard Ben Barch. Uh, Doug Peterson more or less said it yesterday that that could go either way. You could get one guy start this week, one guy starts next week. So that's a battle that you have to keep watching. The right guard position is Brandon Sheriff. You knew that when they signed him. Solid, not worried about him at all. And, of course, Cam Robinson is the left tackle. There's a little bit of concern about the depth of the offensive line, and that's where the big part of my okay comes into play because I don't know uh, about the depth. I think that, that may be one position. There's another kid over there. I can't think of his name, number 73. And I got – I have the name right here, but the thing about it is I might still screw it up with the way that I pronounce it. Yeah, I might still screw it. I might not pronounce that name correctly. Uh, Badara, I think it's Treori. They really, really like him. He's probably the biggest offensive lineman on the team. I think once he gets healthy, he'll provide them – uh, some uh, depth at at swing offensive linemen at both tackle spots and probably guard. But I'm going to still do that as a little bit of an incomplete, not give them a grade, just say it's okay at this point, but something to keep the eye on. Tight end, I'm, I'm a little low on this one right now. And the reason why is because the tight end is a big part of Doug Peterson's offense. Evan Ingram is a guy who can look like the best guy in practice one minute and the worst guy in practice the next. So there's a Big variance between what you're going to get with him from day to day, but he is putting in the work. He's working hard. And I think he's going to have those moments where he's great. 
you just hope he doesn't have those moments where he's not and in a game where there's 70,000 people in the stands it starts to snowball on him so you just hope uh, I like Chris Manhurts I was telling someone yesterday that Chris Manhurts has looked really really good he's, he's probably got the best physique of any of their tight ends and he's caught the ball better than you would think and most people consider him a guy who's a blocker that's weird that a guy who played basketball is a better blocker than he is a pass catcher. Normally, you would think that that would be the other way around. But he's looked apart. Dan Arnold, I have not been as impressed with him. The thing about Arnold is he can look good, but because he's so tall and thin, he can take a wallop and fumble the ball. And uh, Luke Farrell has also left a little bit to be desired when, when it comes to being a complete and total tight end. So I do think that's a position that's low. It doesn't mean it's going to stay there. Guys can outperform it and actually raise it up. Farrell's still a young guy, and um, they could also probably – maybe they'll add something. Doug likes that spot, though, so that's one thing that I can tell you right now that he and I probably differ on. He really likes the way that that room looks. Uh, special teams, I think it's high. And I know people are going to be going crazy because we haven't decided who the kicker is going to be. I think they'll figure that out. I think you'll find somebody that can kick. What you won't find is a guy who can punt like Logan Cook. Logan, Logan Cook might be the best punter in the NFL, and that's not hyperbole. And I know that kid in Buffalo kicked the ball 82 yards the other day. Logan Cook can bang it. And uh, he's the biggest punter in the league for sure, but I think he's very, very good. And I also think that when Jamal Agnew gets healthy, he gives them one of the five or six best dual return guys in the league. And I say dual return because not every team has a punt returner that's also a kick returner. Well, he's doing both. And uh, he looks like he's in a good place health-wise. So I think – I got a net in here that's getting on my nerves. But I, I think he um, he and, and Logan Cook are the reasons why this unit is high. Also, I believe they're going to be a good coverage team because the type of guys they have on the roster, when you look at the competition, the levels of competition, and the way that they were emphasizing that yesterday, and that was the most competitive period, believe it or not, of the scrimmage. I'm going to go ahead, go out on a limb and say they're going to be a pretty good coverage team. So that's why I'm going to give them a high grade. We're going to do the defense, and then we'll kind of tie it all together, and I'll tell you where I think the team is as a whole. We'll do that in just a second here on Locked On Jaguars after I tell you about Elias Digital. Listen, man, you need as much help as you can trying to figure out your fantasy and your betting needs, right? The, the start of the season is almost here, and if you're into sports betting or fantasy, you need a competitive edge to win, and that's why I highly recommend the Elias Game Plan app. Say it again, Elias, E-L-I-A-S, Game Plan app. It's the ultimate sports betting and fantasy companion for the NFL, NBA, and Major League Baseball. It's the only app from the most trusted name in sports stats, Elias Sports Bureau, the official statisticians of U.S. pro sports leagues, including – the NFL. The app lets you access team and player stats, head-to-head team comparisons, and Elias insights from the Elias Sports Bureau's research team. It's your one-stop source for player news, expert game analysis, perfect for the preseason with your draft and all of your fantasy needs. It's where you need to be. Now, I personally have used it, and I really, really enjoy it, and I love it. Sometimes I don't want to do all of the work that's required for me to make those positive decisions, and there's no other name I trust better than the Elias Game Plan app. Take my advice and download the Elias Game Plan app today with new features available all the time. Take your game to the next level. NFL season is around the corner, so don't wait. Find Elias Game Plan in the App Store or Play Store today. And, of course, I got to tell you about Built Bar. If you haven't tried Built Bar Puffs yet, you are depriving yourself of one of the greatest joys. And guess what? They're a new flavor. There's a new flavor right now. Delicious, indulgent cookie dough. You heard me. I said delicious, indulgent cookie dough. Covered in chocolate. That's right. Built has done it again. And let me introduce you to your new flavor. You know I love that salt caramel, but that cookie dough chunk puffs. Has a light and chewy texture, real cookie dough chunks, and of course, they're covered with 100% chocolate. All the joys of eating a cookie dough without the hassle of making it. Plus, it's healthy for you. Run to Built.com to snag a box for you or the family, and it will be the perfect treat where you can find a good hiding place and just hoard them all and be selfish and keep them for yourself. Go to Built.com, use promo code LOCKED15, and get 15% off your order 
The promo code, once again, is LOCKED15 and try that cookie dough chunk puff. All right, man, we're rolling along here on Locked on Jaguars here on one of our numerous days where you make us your first listen and it's your team every day here on the Locked on Jaguars and the Locked on Podcast Network. Vinny Iyer, Locked on Fantasy Football, is laying it down right now for you to get ready for your fantasy drafts as well as the fantasy football season. Make sure you lock in to that Locked On Fantasy Football podcast. It is wherever you subscribe and get your podcast and make it your next listen after you listen to us here on Locked On Jaguars. Let's do this defense, man, with the confidence levels. I'm going to go high with the defensive line. My defensive line will include the edge rushers, even though they're listed as Sam and Will linebackers because of how they're going to play. They're going to be setting the edge. They're going to be mostly in the backfield. So I'm going to include the pass rushers, not just the two that's starting in Josh Allen and Trayvon Walker. I'm also going to include the backups. That includes Caleb Vaughn, man. Caleb Vaughn has provided a lot of energy right now, but we're talking Arden Key and Dewan Smoot and Mr. Jones, number 40, who is raising uh, some, some, eye, some eyebrows, too. To go along with Devon Hamilton and Roy Robinson-Harris, who pushed that pocket around like crazy yesterday, and I'm going to tell you something. I like our, our new addition, too, our Fado Kazi. I love his size and his effort in the middle. So he gives another big body, as well as guys like Adam Gossis, who can come in in reserves when that line gets to rotating and will give them a very, very good front seven. They're big, fast, physical, strong, long. I expect them to bat a lot of balls down and really, really get after people. The linebackers, this is the interior line. I'm going to say they're okay. Only because I know Devin Lloyd is going to come back soon. I saw him running around yesterday, and I do like Foy Oluwakan, who led the league in tackles last year as a member of the Atlanta Falcons. The backup guys played better yesterday, whether it was Terrell Adams or Chappelle Russell. Chad Muma has looked better as the season is. And, and Shaq, Shaq Quarterman looked pretty good yesterday, too. He had a really, really good practice. So I would expect all of those guys to really, really make a contribution as the year goes on. And Mike Caldwell was a linebacker, so I know it's going to be a point of emphasis for him, making sure that everyone is on the same page. Safety, I'm pleasantly surprised at the way uh, Rayshon Jenkins has played. And whether y'all want to hear it or not, Dewey Wingard has started out very, very, very well in camp. Uh, my man Thomas yesterday had a had a huge, huge hit. He had a couple of big hits in the scrimmage yesterday, uh, Daniel Thomas did. He had a couple of number 20. He had a couple of big hits yesterday uh, in practice. So a lot of these guys has, have, have looked really good. Chris Claybrooks had the play of the day yesterday in terms of uh, making a play in camp. He, he did really, really good. Uh, Rudy Ford, of course, is your is your player that everyone keeps talking about on special teams in those drills he did good monteric brown who who's also going to play a little bit back there in some certain situations also played well let's get to the corners i mentioned monteric brown who's a backup uh xavier crawford has really looked good number 22 whenever they give him a shot let me tell you let me tell you my man shaq griffin looked good in practice yesterday okay he's competing Doing very well. I, I forgot to mention Andre Cisco too. Andre Cisco has looked real, real well. He looked bigger and more physical this uh, this camp uh, when I mentioned the safeties. Tyson Campbell looks like he's the cold heart of truth. I was worried a little bit about Shaq. I'm not worried about him anymore. He's a very, very confident, a little smaller side. I thought he was a little bit bigger than what he is, but Shaq Griffin looked good yesterday in drills. Will come up and stick his nose in. Uh, but Tyson Campbell. Tyson Campbell's the dude. Tyson Campbell looks like the guy. He just has to catch those interceptions. He had one yesterday, and he kind of let it get uh, out of his hands a little bit. But, yeah, I expect big things from uh, our defense. Darius Williams also, we've seen not as much of him. So we got to understand that I'm not worried about him, though, because he he's just a scrappy dude, and he's going to get it done. He got it done for a team that won the Super Bowl last year. Here's where we tie us all together. You're going to get Darius Williams. You're going to get Devin Lloyd injected into this defense. You're going to start seeing who the rotation is on the defense, and they're going to start really battening down the guys that they're going to go out there with. 
I think early on the defense will lead this team while the offense still trying to figure itself out behind the offensive line. But I also believe that this is a team that's capable of scoring at least 24 points a game. Now, in this league, you usually need more than that. But if your defense plays better, then you're fine. I think once the offensive line gets better and once they continue to incorporate James Robinson back in and they figure out who their top receivers are and they know where they're going to be and they get on a rapport with them and the offensive line starts to gel. Folks, I'm quietly optimistic about this football team. I'm noisily optimistic about this football team. And I think you should be optimistic as well. All right, that's my high, low, okay assessment uh, on uh, in, terms, in terms of confidence level right now after the scrimmage. We'll have more from you as training camp continues and we get ready for another preseason game this weekend uh, against the Pittsburgh Steelers. It'll be a really, really good test. I think the starters, according to head coach, going to play. He's going to press them, going to play them a little bit longer. And we'll see how they line up against what I think is another good football team in Pittsburgh. Until then, you guys take care of each other. and We'll see you the next time on Locked on Jaguars.